there was an action uh, on an Android engineer here at Wayfair. We said all those things in the wrong order, a lot of the running start, right? Um, so yeah, today I'll be talking about Mavericks, which is a, a neat uh, framework for developing Android apps. Uh, and uh, I've been working with it for about five or six months now on a side project app that I've been working on. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with it, so I thought I would tell you guys all about my experience with it. And uh, yeah, so a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into like the basics of what it is, uh, mostly because there's other talks that will do that better than me. Um, so this is, but I will, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you already know what Mavericks is, yeah, probably don't. So I will try to give you at least a basic familiarity with uh, what it is, how it works, uh, so that we can discuss, uh, more importantly, uh, the app that I made that uses it, um, not just for my own self-promotion, but because I want to also talk about some of the things uh, that uh, I had, in, uh, so, some of the good experiences that I've had with Mavericks. Um, and also a couple of weird things and kind of things to keep in mind if you're considering adding, adding it to your own app. Uh, so uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, so what is Mavericks? Uh, by the way, uh, that's how they want to pronounce that. It's not M-E-R-X, it's Mavericks. I didn't make it up. Don't blame me. Um, so what is it? Uh, it's uh, a, a library for developing Android apps. Uh, it's Kotlin only, uh, so you can't use Java with it. Uh, I mean, you can, but like, don't. Um, and it's uh, it was invented over by the fine folks at Airbnb. Um, uh, it takes care of a lot of things like state management, uh, persistence, uh, really just any annoying thing that happens in Android development, um, as per, at least as far as the UI layer. Uh, Mavericks will help you out with it. Uh, one thing that you should know right out of the gate is that uh, although it makes it a lot easier to work with fragments, it also kind of expects you to work with fragments, so uh, hopefully that's not a non-start for you with the presentation. So getting right into um, kind of some, of the, some of the details of um, how you build an app in Mavericks, uh, we're going to start by talking about what a state object is. Um, so you should think of a, a state as kind of an input to a fragment. And uh, it should contain everything that that fragment needs in order to render you a nice, shiny screen. Uh, so any of the text that you want to put up there, any collections of stuff, that should all go to your state. Uh, it should be a data class, uh, and it should extend the Maverick state. Simple stuff. Let's look at an example. Uh, this is our first code slide, real quick. Can everybody see that? Because uh, the monitor's not really rendering. I probably was right. Like, the way you are. Cool. Uh, so it's a, as you can see, data class check, extends Maverick state check. Uh, there's two fields in this data class. Um, and uh, this is an example from my app. We'll talk more about what it is later, but it represents the state for uh, the closer details screen. Um, so it takes uh, an identifier for the composer that we're displaying. Um, and then two fields, uh, composer and song, uh, sorry, songs, uh, which you can imagine being the songs by that composer. You'll notice that uh, songs would make sense if it was a list of song. And composer, you would make sense if it was a type composer. But they're both wrapped in this thing called async, um, and they're both defaulted to something called uninitialized. So what's async? Um, async is a seal class that's given to you by Mavericks. Um, and it's basically its way of, of giving you loading content error states. Um, so it wraps the data that you're interested in, and it has four possible values, uninitialized, just kind of a default state, roughly corresponds to null, if not quite the same thing. Uh, loading, which indicates that uh, your asynchronous operation has started, uh, but not completed yet. Success, which indicates that it has completed and everything's hunky-dory. Uh, and fail, which indicates uh, that error occurred. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, what's cool about these sealed classes is that um, they are just wrappers, and once you've determined the type of async that you have, um, these subclasses give you um, ways of getting the data that you're interested in. So for example, on, on a fail uh, object, you can do .error to get the exception that happened. Um, on a success object, you can do .invoke uh, to um, get the, the data that you're actually trying to unwrap. So uh, you're, as I mentioned, you're building an app with fragments. You're going to want to extend the base Mavericks fragment. Uh, so when you do, uh, you're going to have to uh, extend Sorry, implement a method called invalidate. And invalidate, in invalidate, you're going to want to do all 
the things that create a screen. So like, um, uh, have uh, that composer in that song. This is where you uh, do the magic that turns that event into a screen. Um, the fragment uh, will request a state with which to do that. And it does that from this thing that we haven't talked about yet called the viewmodel. You guys get to the next slide. Uh, where does the viewmodel come from? Mavericks has function delegates on uh, these Mavericks fragment uh, that will provide that for you. Uh, there's three different ones that you can use. One is by fragment view model, which gives you a uh, uh, view model that has the same uh, life cycle and scope as the fragment that you're in. Um, act by activity view model, which we call the bubble activity that you're in. Um, and what's cool about these two uh, delegates is that if you are in a situation where uh, that view model has not been created yet, for example, the screen doesn't exist yet, uh, these delegates will create them for you. Um, act by activity view model is useful because it lets you share a view model among other fragments that would be the same activity. Uh, but there could be some contention if you do that between who actually creates it. Um, so there's a third uh, delegate that we offer called by existing view model, which uh, will only return Scopes the activity uh, of the type that you're looking for, uh, but it will not create one. If one doesn't already exist um, in, uh, in that activity that you're uh, working with, uh, it will throw an exception and give a nasty batch. Um, so let's look at an example of a uh, case map experiment. Uh, so that's a lot of code, so let's just look at things piece by piece. Uh, the first thing in this fragment is that, that's relevant is, uh, and again, this is, corresponds to the same state we were looking at before, composer leads to a screen, composer fragment. Um, so the first thing we do is we get the view model by calling the get delegate uh, composer view model by fragment view model, etc. Uh, then we have that uh, invalidate function. Uh, you'll see here that I've set it equal to this method called uh, with state. Um, and in with state, we pass it two things: the view model and the lambda of something we do with that state. Uh, so what with state does is it's going to ask that view model for the most recent state um, that it has. Uh, this will be put into a queue of events. Eventually, you will be given that um, the most recently updated state um, inside that lambda. So that's what uh, what's, what's going on there. So you'll get that state, and within that within that lambda, you do whatever it is you need to do with that state to actually get stuff on screen. So in this, in this situation, I'm just pulling out a local reference to the composer to the songs, uh, and then I pass them to this method that I wrote called construct list, which does something, gets me a list of things to put into a recycler view, uh, and then I pass that list of things to the recycler view. Adapter. Uh, that's just called list adapter. Um, submit list. Uh, we've not used uh, list adapter yet. Uh, it's, uh, submit list is a way of doing, uh, giving data to it that automatically data utils it for you. Um, so it's all pretty standard stuff. Uh, so let's look just at in, in, in very little detail at what the something was that gets us the um, that list of things to display. Um, so. We're doing a couple in when construct here on the songs that we passed in. Um, and notice that at this time, songs is still of async type, so we need to figure out what uh, actual async type it actually is. Uh, so that when block will tell us if, if it's either uh, loading or initialized. We'll call this other method that will create a list of uh, loading states to throw in the recycler view. Uh, so this is how you get one of those like um, placeholder things that you see in all the apps these days that, that, that the kids are using. Um, if it's a fail, uh, we'll call some other method that'll get you an error displayer thing to throw in the recycler view. Um, and if it's a success, we'll actually display the data that we're interested in. Um, uh, so notice in here, um, uh, like I mentioned before, once we actually know what type it is, Colin with his brilliant um, spawn casting and all that, uh, will let you just directly say songs.error in this case to get the throwable. Uh, so we can pass the throwable directly to that method. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you can do songs.invoke once you know it's a success to actually get at the songs you're interested in displaying. Um, dot invoke in Kotlin, you can omit the word invoke and just put it in parentheses. Uh, so it's a pretty nice and elegant way of getting at the data that's, uh, that's wrapped in there, in my opinion. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what a view model is. Uh, so when, you, when you're using Mavericks view model, uh, first thing you're going to realize about it is that it extends an Android X view model. Uh, so it's a very similar concept. Um, you get all the nice stuff about that, lifecycle awareness and all that stuff. Um, view models are, uh, you, know, you, you probably have a sense of this already, but this is really the gateway to you getting uh, an 
any interaction with your state. Um, it's really important in, in, in this Mavericks universe to have that in the gatekeeper um, because having like very regimented access to data uh, and only using it when you're allowed to and all that stuff is really important to make this stuff be correct all the time. Um, so remodel gives you uh, a metric called set state uh, to modify data and with state to access data. Uh, and both of these will help figure out um, uh, both what thread to operate stuff on um, and also uh, make sure that stuff happens relatively in the right way. Uh, when you construct one, you do need to provide an initial state. Um, so there's no such thing as like a null pointer from like you not having a text view to show there. Um, you do need to give it a state that at least uh, tells you something from there. It could still be null, but at least you're at. Um, so let's look at an example of a uh, composer view model. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, in the constructor, we are providing uh, Mavericks will at construction time for this view model is convert the, with the private delegates equal constructor view model for you. Um, it will uh, provide you an, an initial state. Uh, and then the second argument there is you know, the proprietary you might have. It's a repository that we'll use for actually pulling this stuff out of, uh, in my case, the Google database. Um, you can supply that with uh, the dependency injection framework of your choice. You don't need to know how that works. Uh, we'll talk, talk a little bit about that later. Uh, and you can see we have to extend Mavericks view model, which is generically attached to the state that we're interested in, and we do have to pass that initial state up to the superclass. So, um, thing to remember with view models, like I said, they're, uh, they're Android X view models. So, one fragment, one view model, um, their life cycles are inextricably linked. Um, so, a good um, pattern to follow is that you should, um, at the construction time of the view Model, uh, try to start any uh, any synchronous operations to like download new stuff or load stuff from the database that you want to put on the screen. Uh, so if we're doing that in the constructor of this view model, we call these two methods fetch composer and fetch songs. What does those look like? So here we have an interesting construct. We have with state again, and now we're in the view model, so we don't need to pass in a view model, that would make no sense. Um, and when you're in with a uh, view model and you call it state and you need to make sure that it's not blocking on any thread, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so again, inside here you are given, inside this with state lambda, you are given the, the most recent state that you, that you have for, uh, which I do use here to pull out the uh, composer ID for which we want to actually run this ruling query. Um, so I tell my repository to get me the composer with this ID. Uh, you don't need to know too much about how that works in the back end, other than get composer returns an observable of the list of songs, which is a plain R style observable. It's, uh, I'm sure you've all seen that before. Uh, but this is where you would expect to then see a dot subscribe call. And there isn't one there, so what gives? View model gives us this neat method called execute um, that does a lot of the Mavericks magic. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, so it gives us a bunch of text. Uh, one is uh, it will uh, ensure that it's lifecycle aware. So it'll clear the uh, operation for you um, if your fragment is rotated or killed or um, any of that stuff. Um, it will perform the wrapping for you, um, the async wrapping. So when you originally subscribe to get composer, I should say when you call execute, uh, you'll immediately get an emission of type loading. Um, when the actual on next comes through, you'll get an emission of type success. If an on error happens, um, you, uh, the chain doesn't give, the chain might give both, I'm not sure. Uh, but the, uh, the point is you will get a wrapped error type uh, with Throwable in there for you. Uh, so, what do we do inside this, uh, uh, this lambda? Well, this lambda is uh, actually, in Mavericks terminology, a reducer. Um, and there's two uh, important things to realize there. So, the first thing is that uh, you have this single argument in the lambda. In this case, it's called the composer. Uh, and that represents the emission um, wrapped in an async type. Uh, and this, uh, inside that lambda, you also have this, uh, like Java Kotlin, this. Um, which uh, actually represents the uh, previous state. And the thing that you must do with this reducer is somehow take that previous state and your emission and produce a new state, um, which you then return. Because this is Kotlin, you can return it without the, the return keyword if it's the last line. Um, but the thing to remember about states is that they're supposed to be completely 
immutable. So you can't just go into the previous state and change the field in there and with the new field that would break the contract. So what you actually do is you take the old state, you copy it, replacing only the new field with the addition, and then you return that. Um, so that's basically how most reducers that you're going to write in Mavericks work. Um, you're going to get an old state, you're going to copy it with like a slight modification, you're going to return it. Uh, fairly common pattern, uh, so it's uh, good to get used to it. That's how Fetch Composer works. Um, you're going to see that even though Fetch songs are return the list of things, pretty much the same idea. Uh, so that's kind of the 10, 15 minute version of uh, how Mavericks works. So I'd like to take a moment to, uh, well, it's going to be actually probably about 20 minutes, uh, to talk about the app that I wrote using it. Uh, it's called BG Lead Cheats, um, and that's short for video game lead cheats. Don't laugh, I know how these are. Um, it's uh, based on the website of the same name, bgleadsheets.com, and the point of it is to display sheet music uh, from video game music. And it is targeted specifically at like a jam session type of setting. Um, so like if you have a bunch of friends who are really into video game music and one of you plays guitar and one of you plays bass, you can use our sheets to put together a video jam. So uh, we have like very tightly uh, managed reductions of the sheet music and we have chord symbols and we try to uh, cater specifically to jam sessions, uh, both with the sheet music themselves and the design of the app. So the app lets you uh, browse our collection uh, of, of sheets by game, by composer, uh, or by just all the sheets. You can also do text-based search by all three of those categories. Um, and uh, a really important feature for us um, is that actually you can see the sheet music in different transpositions. So like a saxophone needs the music to be formatted differently than a trumpet. And uh, obviously a vocal part uh, looks completely different, and many songs don't even have vocals. So uh, managing that is an important part of the UI. Uh, a couple of GIFs showing what the app looks like. Uh, so I'm going to have to follow along with this screen now. Um, so this is the main screen. Uh, list of all, all, all our sheets by game. Uh, you can see there that there is one of those shiny blue things in, in, in the list. Um, you, you've now seen all the sausage and, and how it's made. So you can kind of guess how that's made uh, or how that's put together. Uh, the header at the top is also a list item. And uh, because of Diffutil uh, and a bunch of help in uh, collection and uh, filtering and mapping and all that noise, uh, this is actually relatively um, easy to put together. Uh, next screen is what it is. Uh, so you probably noticed the bottom nav at the bottom, uh, which is usually where the bottom nav goes. Um, you can use that to access the various top level screens um, and a bunch of other functions in the app. Uh, so here we're going to the all sheets screen, and you can kind of see that. When we get there, we load up a thumbnail of each of the BG sheets, uh, which is cool because it means that Picasso will attach to that sheet and when we actually click on it to look at it, it's already loaded and we don't have to uh, wait for it a second time. Uh, also on the bottom nav, you can see the part selector. So on, on this GIF, I'm clicking on bass um, to see the bass guitar parts uh, or bass clap parts more accurately. Um, and when I do click that, you'll see that we actually recycle and reload all new thumbnails. Um, so that's and when we click vocals, there's not a lot of vagrant music on the vocals in it, right? So a lot of the sheets go away, uh, and you're left with just the songs that you can actually sing to. Uh, again, a lot of cool stuff going on there with Kotlin Collection and Diffutils, um, uh, but I think that um, uh, putting all this together uh, with Mavericks is e e easier uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, so there's a quick shot of what it looks like to see the sheet music. And again, the viewer screen is also uh, inspired by Mavericks. And a lot of the same concepts. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what I think is the magnum opus of this app, uh, which is the search screen. It's probably the most complicated screen on there. Uh, when you type your text in there, we search all three tables for that text field. Um, and uh, those are different. Uh, obviously, there can be different search tables that, are, that have potentially wildly different run times. Um, they'll have, all have their own independent loading states and potentially error states and success states. Um, and so the, the workflow that Mavericks gives you where um, you pipe um, all of these updates into a state um, and then you that tells the fragment to update itself based off of the new state. And it's just throwing everything out every single time it gets that update and constructing a new list of things every single time without worrying about when 
you should have had to get from one of the other two games, just by tossing it all out and building a new one. Uh, goes a long way to making sure that something like this is possible. Just like I'm not, I don't have the hand to hand picture that like um, all the different edge cases with three different observable tools like this would have it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how the search can work. So here's a uh, state class that powers that. Uh, it's got four fields in it. Um, the query, which is the thing that you type into the search box, um, and then an async uh, of list of song. Again, we set these to un uninitialized, uh, which will produce a loading state at the start. Here's the view model for it. Uh, Constructor looks very similar to the other one. Uh, now, the thing that I want to point out on this is that uh, I have this probably very familiar looking thing, disposable, uh, deposit disposable at the top. Uh, and I bet you're probably wondering, wait, Mavericks just goes as if where you are Mavericks. Why do you have that? Well, um, it does, uh, but this is a search screen. Um, and uh, we have an ongoing search, and the user types a new thing. We want to clear uh, or stop the previous search. So the neat thing is that um, we can do that with Mavericks. Um, so the first thing we, we do uh, when we get a new query um, is first we check if the new quote unquote query is actually different than the previous one we may still be working on or previously did work on. Um, if it is a different query, then we'll actually call set state to update the state with that new query so that the next check makes sense, right? Um, and then we will call search operations.clear to stop the previous search. Now the thing that is um, worth noting on here is, again, very similar thing, uh, repository, this is observable, we ex uh, subscribe to it and execute. But the difference here is that we're actually keeping a reference to the observable, uh, which is really nice of, uh, in my opinion, really nice of Mavericks to uh, give you access to that. Uh, they're not saying like, oh, we'll manage the, the, the disposable for you, so hands off. Uh, you actually do get control of that, and you can do whatever you want with it. In this case, whatever I want is just has them all on deck, deposit disposable. That's, uh, so that's the, the, the search screen. Uh, not a whole lot uh, new there. But I do want to talk a little bit about the, um, uh, the bottom nav bar. Uh, and it's actually represented by a, a class that I call the HUD fragment. Heads up display. Uh, and it powers everything uh, that is not grayed out when the menu comes up. Uh, so the search box at the top, uh, the bottom nav peak, and all the stuff under it. And uh, it's actually the only part of my app that right now is not powered by a recycle bin. Um, I probably could make it that way, and probably should. Uh, but I think it's relevant to talk about that right now because it's, uh, it's not a recycle bin and everything in here is a recycle bin. So the, the stake here is a little bit more complicated because there's a bunch of things to keep track. But it's a uh, Largely just booleans, right? Like, should this thing be visible? Should this thing not be visible, etc. Um, and uh, so I can actually go back to slide because um, let's go back to the slide. Uh, let's actually talk about the feature set here. So you can click uh, check for updates to force downloads from the web. Um, you can see at the bottom right there is an update date. Um, there's a loading state when you do force the update. Um, and the thing that I didn't show here is when you click render select. Um, that also is an asynchronous operation because we have to uh, ask uh, the local database for all the sheets before we can get a random one out of all the sheets. Um, so a lot of uh, potentially asynchronous stuff on there, and that is also captured in the state class. Uh, so uh, update time is the thing that sh shows the text at the bottom right. Network refresh uh, is a way of us keeping track of that loading state um, and random, same thing, loading state for the uh, random select uh, feature. Um, so here's the fragment for and the uh, first thing to call out is that the HUD view model uh, is actually supplied by activity view model. Uh, this is so we can share uh, the HUD view model state with other fragments in the activity, uh, which is actually the only activity in here. So uh, basically, this is, this is effectively a single thing in my app. Um, and then the invalidate uh, method, um, pretty similar with state, view model, et cetera. Uh, but now we're actually going through and, and uh, saying, like, if this thing should be visible, then make it visible. It should, etc. All that stuff. Now, in a perfect world, um, so I have here if HUD visible, show HUD, right? Um, in a perfect world, show HUD should be a method that is smart enough to know off if the HUD was already visible, right? Uh, so when you're taking this approach, you want to be careful to uh, not do a lot of unnecessary work. It's actually a perfect uh, use case for something like data binding, where you could uh, take an entire XML layout uh, and uh, map it to one of these state objects. 
have data binding for your LR for you. So data binding, when data binding does it for you, it's going to be smart enough to know off that it's not actually changing anything. Um, so one of the really cool things about Mavericks is it's a real great way to uh, kind of get synergy between all the various tools that have come out in the last two or three years, column collections, uh, uh, digitals, data binding, all that stuff, uh, to really make it so you can let the tools do the work of figuring out whether you got it needs an update and so that you don't have to. Um, let's talk a bit about the view model. Uh, not a whole lot to see here other than like, uh, so here's actually where I'm handling uh, when you click the menu button to pull up the menu. Uh, it's just a set state called. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I don't need to do anything. I just written this with a, in a single line with a, an exclamation point with you know, these features. Um, so I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the HUD remodel was uh, created by Activity, or the USB by Activity model uh, developer. Uh, so, but uh, didn't really go into why that is. Uh, well, why that is is so that we can then go back to something like our composer fragment. Start um, and we can actually update it to uh, not just have a reference to the one composer view model. We can actually also um, get by existing view model or by other fragments view model. And why would we want to do that? Well, uh, I lied to you. The invalidating uh, method in my app actually doesn't just subscribe to with state. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Doesn't subscribe with state just on uh, view model. It also subscribes to how view model. When you do this, you get one of um, one argument for each view model with the most recent state. And uh, through which state will be called um, whenever any of these view models are updated. Uh, so what's cool about that is now I can ask the HUD state for the selected part from the bottom nav bar. Uh, and then pass that into the list model constructor um, and use that to filter out, for example, if the selected part is vocals, let's get rid of all the songs that don't have vocals in it. Um, so I think that's a pretty cool way of uh, sharing information screens um, and uh, making sure that again like now, now we're talking about two different fragments with potentially different life cycles and uh, updates between them too. I, I don't want to keep track of all that. I just want the most recent state. I just want to throw everything out, make a new one, and put that on screen and hope that the tools make things right for me. Um, so that's a bit about my app. Uh, I, with my experiences putting that together, I, I, I found that there are a lot of benefits to working with Mavericks. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, which is that it's Redux. It's just Redux. There's nothing about it that's not Redux. So if you have uh, any familiarity with like, React, you've got uh, React.js or React Native or even Flutter, uh, a lot of these frameworks are all going in that direction. And uh, it's, uh, if, if you were at Droid Foundry or City, like, basically everyone's you know, going in a direction of like, uh, of, like Redux. You know, it is, it's, it's, it's all a very similar thing. Letting the tools do the work for you. Um, and actually, on the uh, Mavericks wiki, they just have this chart basically listing all the methods they ripped off from React Native, um, which is actually a very interesting insight into um, how and why Airbnb exists because, I'm uh, sorry, Mavericks exists because uh, Airbnb uh, kind of put this together, uh, this framework together as their answer to moving away from React Native but wanting to keep the things about it that they liked. Um, so it's a very similar pattern. Or a very similar technology, I should say. Um, Redux pattern, why is it good? Um, I said this a lot of times already. Um, it, it's just an easier way of keeping things correct through state changes. So you're not worried so much about the state changes so much anymore, um, so much as you are just ensuring a correct state. Um, it's also, in particular for Android, it's really useful across life, life cycle events. I can't tell you how many times I've like, just you know, while you're like, oh, you rotate the screen and now that text field is blue. Like, why is that? Well, it's because you wrote the code wrong. So you know, uh, let the tools figure it out for you. Um, kind of hinted at this before. If you have an engineer on your team who has familiarity with React or Flutter, um, and you want them to start working on your Android app, and you're an average feature, they're going to have a really great time uh, transitioning. Uh, so uh, that's a nice bonus. And then selfishly for me, because I'm definitely like big time on the apply changes. I find that um, working with Mavericks has really helped out a lot. Because um, when hot swap happens, like you're literally right there with the exact same state that, that, um, that you had before. Um, and this is actually a huge benefit that a lot of people cite of working with Flutter, um, is that the hot swap situation is, is much better over there. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I find it has worked over pretty well with Mavericks. Um, 
The caveat there being, of course, when I change your parts. It's, it's a lot better than Instagram. So I don't want to put too much shade. It's, it's great. Uh, Mavericks gives you uh, something called debug mode, uh, which you can use or not use, but definitely do use it. Um, um, and what it does is it, it adds a lot of checks to your code that you definitely don't want happening in the wild because it will crash a lot. Um, and also be slow. Um, well, not that slow, but uh, they're wasteful at the point. Um, and these, these checks basically help you, uh, they, they help prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, especially if you haven't worked in a Redux uh, type of mindset before, you'll make a lot of uh, very uh, easily caught mistakes um, as you kind of transfer yourself to uh, kind of think in that state based mindset. So, one of the th things that um, state members are immutable, um, and also over mutable types. So like, yeah, of course they all have to be vowels, uh, but you also can't have um, something that is over type mutable list. It's, just, it's still, it might be a vowel, but it's still mutable, right? So uh, it'll uh, throw crashes uh, at you if it sees it, but that helps. Um, you also make sure that your state members are serial serializable or parcelable, which uh, uh, is an important part of uh, one of the other features that I did not talk about yet. Again, just another thing that you want your state members to be is uh, just a uh, make sure they're easy to work with. You'll also run tests to make sure that your reducers are idempotent, which is one of those fancy words that computer science types like to throw around to make themselves sound like they're at the top of the their nose. Um, and I'm not one of those people, so I look it up. Um, it means that your if you get if you have the same input, it results in the same output every time. Um, uh, in other words, it, 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 it's another way of saying the phrase pure function. Uh, a pure function is something where if you uh, give it the exact same inputs, every single time you get the same outputs. And that's obviously really handy for consistency. Uh, so one of the ways that Mavericks uh, enforces this is it will actually run all your reducers twice and uh, check the hash codes of the outputs to make sure that they're the same. And if it fails, um, then you're crashed. Um, it's good to know that going in because otherwise you'll be looking at your logs and see like your producer running twice and be like, uh, did I switch one of that twice? It definitely happened to me. Uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely a useful feature. Uh, again, uh, all these things are, as I'm sitting here talking to you about how it works and the Mavericks mindset and all, it's all obvious, right? Like you want stuff to be immutable because it's a good idea. Um, but when you work in an organization of like 100 Android developers and not everybody went to this awesome talk right now about Mavericks, right? Um, these are mistakes that can happen, uh, and having the tools to look out for those type of things, uh, I think is a really great uh, plus point for actually aggregating to it. Uh, you mentioned that the new models that Mavericks give you are uh, lifecycle aware. Uh, that is, like I said, they're based on Android X2 models. Um, a couple of other like, extensions of that, uh, you get um, automatically clear disposables when you use Execute. We talked about that. Any disposables that you don't use execute to, to create, so if you just like manually subscribe to something for one reason or another, you can tie into that same behavior by adding dispose on clear to this disposable. Um, and then also, uh, it will make sure that every time your uh, fragment hits an on start, uh, it will call, uh, it, will, it will make an invalidation happen. Uh, which again, uh, maybe the time you have like uh, one of the more esoteric stage. Uh, Lifecycle events like I don't know uh, going into multi window mode or something like that. Um, those type of things can uh, catch you off guard if you're not in, in, ensuring that that type of stuff happens. Uh, Mavericks has got you covered. Uh, so I want to look at, real quick at the search state classes now, um, and we talk about how one of the fields in here is the query, the thing that you typed in to actually kick off uh, the uh, the search. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the, the, this field right here. Uh, one of the things that, that can happen, especially when, when you have a, a, a feature like search or any type of form, is uh, if a process is killed, um, that's a little bit more severe of a uh, lifecycle event than like a screen mutation, right? Um, so coming back from those two different worlds, uh, you often lose a lot of state. Uh, traditionally, the way to handle this is with the um, on save instance state and on 
or store it in state, all that's in your fragment or activity. Uh, and that's a pain. Uh, so actually, uh, Mavericks gives you an annotation that you can slap onto any um, uh, any state class field called persist state. When you do this, um, your fragment will automatically um, toss that into a bundle and persist it uh, within like process and skill. Uh, and it'll automatically retrieve it when the fragment comes back. Uh, in order for this to happen, just like when you do uh, a uh, traditional on restore and on state and state, your field needs to be parcelable or serializable. So there you go, that's why you got that thing in your field. Uh, so um, again, uh, another thing where Mavericks is kind of putting together all the jigsaw puzzle pieces from the last few years. Turns out Kotlin has an answer to that too. If your thing isn't already parcelable, um, there is a Kotlin Android extension thing that Sorry, I should say, an annotation that's a Kotlin Android extension uh, that you can put on any field. Uh, I think it's at parcel wise. Uh, and then you have to put the thing in your uh, field rail to uh, enable it. It will automatically create a parcelable version of that field for you. Um, so take any field, slap that annotation on it, slap persistent on it, boom. Um, and you're off to the races with, uh, with surviving uh, process tech. So, uh, a lot of roast tips to go out, so there's pie in the sky stuff going on here. It's great. Uh, definitely, de definitely really excited about it. What are the, some of the things that are what have been so cool? Um, so, one thing to watch out for is performance. And I would not to say that it has a bad performance, it's something to watch out for. Um, ideally, your invalidate method should be a fairly cheap operation because um, it's going to happen a lot, right? Um, but in all the examples that I just showed you, I was putting together a list, I was taking like 400 songs converting them from one of this thing to one of that thing. And that's a lot of uh, allocation. That's a lot of uh, mapping. It's probably going to cause a garbage collection. Not great. Um, so maybe consider doing all that type of stuff uh, on background. Um, and maybe save the result in your default or something like that. Um, you can also try to come up with ways of limiting your calls to invalid. Um, so let's take one of those. Uh, so here's that uh, closer fragment that I talked about before, and uh, we have uh, we, we now have this awesome way of filtering all the, uh, the songs that we don't want from being displayed on the screen, but at a terrible cost. Now, anytime the HUD view model gets updated for any reason, uh, we're going to get a call to invalidate. And you saw there's a lot of stuff in that view model, right? Um, so basically, even just clicking the menu button to pull up the menu. That's a state change, so that's going to update your field in that state. It's going to get passed over to this fragment uh, and cause an invalidation here, which is going to cause us to go through all the. Uh, we already have the stuff from Room, so we don't need to get it out of there again. But we do need to convert it to uh, to the components that we're going to throw up to recycle you again. Uh, and ultimately, it's not the end of the world because DiffUtil is going to see that we have the exact same list, and it's not really going to do anything. It's going to be like everything's good here. But we did ultimately do all that stuff in the main thread. Uh, and on top of it all, that menu button triggered an animation to slide up the menu. So you're doing all this processing while there's an animation. It's not going to be a smooth animation method on every device. Um, so, so we got to do better than that. Uh, and Mavericks uh, has a couple of ways of doing that. So maybe instead of uh, calling it with state with both of those view models, we can go up to on create. I didn't actually bother to remove the uh, second uh, second argument from with state, so uh, just pretend I did. Uh, but you can go up to un uncreate and say HUD view model dot subscribe, um, and when you do that, you uh, will uh, get a call to that lambda every time HUD view model is updated. Very similar. You'll get a state in there, um, and you can imagine doing something like uh, telling the local view model here. So your new selected part. You don't need all the parts. You just need the one that's selected. Go ahead and update yourself. Um, it turns out actually behind the scenes with state and this subscribe um, uh, method that we're calling here uh, are actually the same uh, mechanism. But all we've really done in this particular example right here um, is move the code to a different place. Like we're still getting updates every time that button updates, so we're, we haven't really solved the problem. So we need something a little bit more specific, and thankfully, Mavericks will give us that. Um, it's a method called select subscribe. Um, and now instead of passing uh, in whatever we passed in on the previous slide, we are passing in a k property um, referring 
into the specific field that we want. Um, and Mavericks is smart enough to take this one of the viewers I put up there and say, oh, all right, he only wants updates from this view model whenever the parts field is updated. So now um, we can do that thing before of taking that uh, parts array and getting the selected one out of it, putting it in our local view model. And this will only execute when the part, when someone clicks on the part list. So now you can open the menu with breathless abandon, you won't get any more invalidates on the screen. Uh, so that's a pretty cool construct that we have there. Um, and uh, it's not entirely relevant for my app, uh, so I don't know if there's a bit of a contrived example to show it, but um, they actually have uh, the same thing too for um, async fields. Um, but there's a bit of a different API because they're async fields. So you supply, again, a property uh, in this case for the uh, network update operation. And you need to supply two lambdas, one for what happens when that uh, async is completed successfully, and one for when it uh, unfortunately does not. Uh, so that, that's a bit of a caveat with the performance link, but uh, again, just like in, in anything else, as long as you're aware of it, you can probably find a way to deal with it. Um, on start, I mentioned that you that invalidation happens in on start. Uh, I kind of lied. It doesn't call invalidate, it calls completely invalidate. <laughs> What that means is it schedules an invalidation to occur. Um, but just like anything else on Android UI stuff, there's no guarantees of working on that copy. Um, so it is a really esoteric thing, but it can lead to some weird behavior like on the screen edition or if, uh, if you're uh, uh, doing testing with the developer option that kills all activities after you commit, uh, which is important to do. Um, there's a workaround. So for example, uh, the thing that uh, I saw was uh, because I am setting up all my data to be displayed in a recycle view adapter, and I'm doing that only when I get invalidate, and invalidate is not happening immediately, what would happen is you would rotate the screen and you would lose your scroll position. You would return the scroll position all the way to the top. Um, and it was a bit of a weird bug. The workaround that I came up with was to just not uh, associate the adapter with the recycle view until I was sure I had data. Not the worst problem in the world, but it, um, if you have uh, something a little bit more complicated than a recycling view or a text view or um, the usual bread and butter stuff that we're, we're writing with every day, so if you have like a surface view or uh, a texture view or uh, any custom view that we wrote basically, you're gonna, and, and you're using Mavericks with it, you're going to want to test that um, that any of the, the process depth or activity depth or screen rotation or any of that stuff. Um, Works as intended. It probably will, but it, it, it's just a thing that I, I, I noticed. Uh, and they know about this, and they're working on some APIs to uh, uh, smooth this over. They being maintainers of their Mavericks. Uh, dependency injection. Uh, so it's complicated. Uh, it doesn't work fantastic with Dagger two out of the box. Uh, if you're coming from like a model view presenter world, you're just expecting to like structure and inject your presenter, and that's the end of the story, right? Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, the uh, delegate providers um, that uh, Mavericks gives you really want to be in charge of creating your driving your, your view models for you. So uh, you need to uh, you can still construct or inject, uh, but you need to uh, supply Mavericks with a factory for it, um, and um, more importantly, you need to pull in an additional library called Assistant Inject by Square uh, to make that all happen. Uh, so again, not the end of the world. It adds a little bit of boilerplate to things, but it, you, you can automate that with a script pretty easily. Um, ultimately, if you're working on a migration to, uh, uh, to Mavericks, you might want to consider a different uh, DI framework. Uh, like Coin's pretty nice a couple of, uh, about an hour ago, uh, so maybe take a look at that. Um, but basically, the, the, the reason is that uh, they're really, uh, they really expect you to uh, do kind of a service locator pattern. And if you're doing that, the dependency injection story is not too bad, uh, but it's something to keep in mind. Testing. Uh, testing is also uh, complicated. Uh, you can test your states pretty trivially. Um, I didn't do this in any of my slides, uh, but one pattern that uh, a, a lot of Mavericks consumers have used is to have what they call derived properties in their state classes. Um, so that's just a fancy name for um, your state class knows how to mutate some of its data in the location in order to um, access it without having to have it go outside. Um, 
my purposes, the purposes of my app, that wouldn't really help me very much. Uh, but if you are doing your any build lot, any uh, business logic in your state, uh, testing that is pretty easy because it's just a data class. Um, review models. Um, there's a lot of asynchronicity happening there. Set state, mid state, all that stuff. A lot of the value prop metrics is that it manages the threading for you. Um, that's not so great for tests. When you're running unit tests in your review models, you can use uh, the test rule that Avrix gives you uh, to ensure everything runs on the same thread. And then you're off to races. Fragments, however, aren't as great. Uh, that's, that's kind of where the testing story is uh, kind of a work in progress. Uh, so why is that? Uh, well, most ob obvious thing that you would want to test in a fragment is to validate. You want to give it some combination of the same input um, and verify that every single time you get the same output, right? And for various different inputs, you'll probably get uh, different outputs. Um, so that seems pretty obvious on paper. The problem is that uh, there's so much uh, intertwining with that with state method, and uh, it's kind of tricky to mock that right now. Can, can be done. How to do that is kind of outside the scope of this, so uh, we're going to leave that uh, alone for the poll. Uh, but uh, they know about that too, um, and uh, they're also working on improving that. Uh, <laughs> so I expect this slide to get revised for the 2020 version of this talk, um, but it's kind of a weak point right now. Uh, and then there's activities, uh, which is a hype train that I was on literally until the day that I started working with Fabrics. I, I was just Believer activities, and I was kind of upset that the it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good two or three years where it looked like people were like, "Yeah, we're done with fragments. The fragments are over, and now like they're back with the vengeance." And I'm kind of kind of not so happy about that, but it's all right. Mavericks exist. So what about activities? Don't just don't. It's not gonna. There's like no support at all for activities. The Mavericks kind of approach is that activities are just a dumb container for fragments. A dumb container for the view models that need to be injected into those fragments. Not dependency injected, but being provided to those fragments. Um, this is great news if you are on the single activity hydra, um, which, again, I, I've, become, I've become a believer in recent months. Um, but if you are not, it's going to add. Sorry? I'm just going to say you are too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're not on the single activity hydra, this is a pretty good cost to pay uh, for a neat little architecture library. Um, but of course, there's no, nothing saying you can't just have Mavericks in some screens in your app. Um, but then you're going to make all the other people in the app who don't have Mavericks kind of jealous, and that's not a great working environment. Um, so you might be noticing that I had to, I had to stretch pretty hard to get some of these um, Mavericks as interpreting slides up there. I think that's a pretty good sign that I can nitpick about like, oh, tests don't work if you are not mocking. Like, it's a it's a good thing. They, they, they've got this figured out pretty well. Um, I think the caveats that do exist, um, simply put, it's it's worth it because you just move so fast with Mavericks, um, and with uh, kind of the synergy between all the tools that you get. Um, the problems that do exist, I I'm not that worried about because there's so much active development still happening. Quite frankly, so much hype around the library. Um, Airbnb has an excellent track record, obviously, um, and uh, a, lot, a lot of big orgs uh, that are already either adopting it or um, have adopted it. Um, I could name check. I probably should have written some, down some names. Um, I think New York Times is one of them. Definitely Dropbox. Uh, uh, yeah, reverse your chops, folks. Um, Wayfair, uh, yeah, this this community company you might have heard of. Uh, we use it um, not in our storefront app. A couple of our uh, smaller apps do use Mavericks, uh, but storefronts probably going to be taking a hard look at it uh, in the near future, I think. Um, and hopefully, you will too, because I think Mavericks is pretty bad. Um, if I have sold you, you might be interested in knowing more. Um, so here's how you can do that. Um, first, the, check the Mavericks repo. The documentation is definitely excellent. They actually have a wiki. Um, which is actually, Wiki makes it sound like a big thing, like a 48 page manual. It's not that big, so there's just not that much to it. Uh, but they also go into a little bit of uh, not just like, here's Mavericks or here's what it is, uh, but also uh, 
we are Airbnb, and uh, this is how we use the Mavericks, which I think is a pretty good sign of confidence that they like really believe in it and do do good and they don't. Um, it goes into like it, it, I think actually they use it as a, that page as part of like their onboarding, but I'm not quite sure. Um, Gabriel Piel, Piel, Gabriel P. Um, gave an excellent talk at DroidCon New York City 2019, um, in which he went into a bunch of a bunch of like practical um, examples with actually live coding, which is like super creative. Um, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not that guy, but um, you should definitely watch that because he talked about a bunch of stuff that I didn't have uh, time to talk about today because I was kind of more focused on should you use it or not. Um, actually, I think also Gabriel Peel um, did um, a course on um, Caster.io um, called the Android Mavericks Fundamentals. To believe that is behind a paywall. Um, so uh, like keep that in mind. And last but not least, uh, EG Leachy's app is now open source as of today. So there's a link to it. Um, definitely uh, pick that up, take a look. Uh, I'm more than happy to receive any feedback on it. Um, any, any pull requests before you fix my terrible uh, bugs. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this was a, that, that this uh, was an interesting and worthwhile waste of your time. Uh, my name is Ed Abbasov, again, I'm an Android engineer at Wayfair. Um, uh, I think I have like five minutes left over for questions, uh, but if you don't get one uh, right now, uh, you can come find me anywhere around here. Um, it's not hard to find, it's just a little bit crazy here. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming to my talk, everybody. So one more session, and then, uh, like we've been saying, 40 at Curry's uh, across the street. Questions? Uh, how do you deal with the, because um, the thing about great ideas is that most people tend to have them to, um, at once. Um, you mentioned like in your uh, the Mavericks fragments, they have an extension where they just activity view model. But recently, um, Android X uh, updates have activity view model um, made in scope. Uh, and also, so, like, how do you like? Uh, and also, like, um, typically one of the things people or some people look at when they want to take in a new third party library is like how does it plug in, right? And inheritance kind of like makes it very, very tightly coupled. So you do have to inherit from a Maverick view model. You do have to inherit from a Mavericks fragment. Um, I just want to know like, how you dealt with that, or how you rationalize it, or how it's like, it might just work. Sure. So uh, there's two questions there. The first one, I think, is a lot easier to answer. Um, I didn't go into too much detail on that particular slide, but if you noticed the um, uh, by activity view model and by all that noise uh, has uh, parentheses on the end. Uh, and you Pass an argument in there. Uh, you can add that argument. I believe either is a key, is string key or a provider of string keys <laughs> that you can use to specify a specific view model that you want. Um, so that's how you kind of you do it against making sure that you don't get the wrong view model. Um, very well, I, I didn't even like about uh, getting scoping the right view model to the wrong thing, and then more like. Uh, Android X, they do have their own uh, activity view model. Like the only difference is that one ends with S, Android X one ends with S, and the um, the Mavericks one just is by activity view model. And I was wondering, like, uh, since both of them are offering the same thing, doing the same, you know, doing different things, like, how do you like see like that clash, that namespace clash, where both of them are offering the same yeah. clashes with the different names? Um, well, um, they're in different packages, <laughs> so that helps. Um, I, I don't think I know enough to answer that question. Uh, not having had experience with uh, active view models. Uh, this is actually, to be honest, my first project on which I used the Android X view model to begin with. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience using them uh, by themselves without the Mavericks wrapper around. Um, to your other question, Tightly coupled by inheritance. 
Um, I think there's truth to that in, in this circumstance because yeah, there's uh, inheritance everywhere at, at, at every stage of, of the, the chain. Um, one thing that I will say in defense of, uh, of that decision <laughs> is that um, a lot of the things that you extend are just good ideas anyways. Like in my opinion, wrapping all the stuff that your screen needs into one state class, I think that's a good idea. It's an aim that you that state class then has to inherit from Maverick, uh, Maverick State. But in a dystopian future where um, Armageddon happens and I remove Maverick's use uh, all, all together from my app, I'm still gonna like having that state with the, all the fields in there, even if I just rip the name off the end, you know what I mean? Um, but ultimately, yeah, you're right. It, it's a, it, it's definitely a price to pay, um, and I don't think it's going to be appropriate for everybody. I think it, it, it's appropriate for my use case because I have a very uh, uh, I have an app that um, where the the, co the benefits I'm getting basically are very easy to to explain and therefore very easy to justify why I'm going all in on this. Um, I mentioned that Wayfair is probably going to take a look at adding it to the app, um, and uh, definitely the concern that you raised is that definitely one of those things that we're going to be taking a, a, a long hard look at. You know, because um, nobody wants to be the net, uh, so, uh, nobody wants to be really like closely coupled with like the next parks. Right? That being said, I, I don't really feel like Airbnb is going to go away anytime soon. I, I, I think that they have. It's a risk that I'm, uh, I'm personally afraid of. Any other questions? Uh, I have one. Um, I've never worked with new models from EMI in that uh, it should be you know, defined in certain states of your UI. And uh, that seems to be how uh, Maverick's kind of pushing you to think about your new model. Um, maybe it's because I've never used MVI. My understanding of MVI is kind of leaning more towards that frame of thought. Uh, are there any challenges you think somebody who has not used MVI and is kind of interested in checking out Maverick? Uh, any challenges they have with trying to change their mindset to you know, what exactly is an actual state for my yeah. model? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it, that's definitely like a, a change in mindset that I had to go th through as well. Um, I think the well, honestly the quickest way to, to Make that change in mindset is to to write your first Redux or MVI feature um, with something like the Mavericks debug mode as training wheels. And you're gonna make all the mistakes. You're gonna you're gonna try to mutate stuff, uh, stay in a place where you're not allowed to. You're gonna um, write an impure function like just from pure habit. And thankfully, the training wheels will be there to catch that. Um, and you'll kind of have these aha moments where you're like. Oh, that's where that bug from 2017 came from. That's why that screen was horizontal in portrait mode, right? Um, is there? Uh, I kind of picked up that you're uh, hoping maybe for like a resource or like a, a book to read that kind of goes into the philosophy of it. And there probably are those, but I'm not familiar with them. I think. Uh, there's a lot of good discourse going on right now about MBI. Um, so it's not a fantastic answer, but um, I, I think you'll probably be hearing a lot more about it in the new ones at things like DroidCon, Plumlin Everywhere, etc. Uh, so just keep your ear to the ground and see where things are going. I, I think other people are going to be making that same mindset adjustment as you, and a lot of other people in the user. We're talking about MBI with the new model, so it's MBBM. Yeah, uh, it, it's all kind of working together. But like Redux and MBI themselves are kind of mostly the same thing now. Um, and uh, what, I, what I will say is that uh, Airbnb is not the only uh, company, large company, throwing their hat in the ring with a library that does this type of thing. Like Spotify has something called Mobius that um, I don't know if they've slapped the MBI name on it. But it's MBI, and it's very similar to this. It's very like you can only change your state in this circumstance. You're, 
have a single method that renders your shit, etc. It's, it's all the same stuff. Um, so it's it is a, a good time to definitely have your beer before this next step. Pretty exciting. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you.